What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as D365Geek and today we are talking about Power Automate and the Office 365 connector and we're going to look at the action which is Jet Emails V3. So Jet Emails V3 allows you to specify a bunch of search criteria and then retrieve only emails that match that criteria and you get them as an array so you get them as like a list of things that you can do. So it's a bit like list records for the CDS actions. So let's take a look at it today. So I've got a trigger in my flow here, which is a, when a new email arrives. I'm actually just going to trigger this uh, manually, so I'm just going to trigger it from a previous run because we're not getting anything from this bit. Next, I'm going to click New Step, and then I can search Office 365. Choose the connector here, and I can scroll down until I get to Get Emails V3 here. So once I've done that, it's going to ask me for some information. And all of these things are optional. Uh, a lot of these things are already pre-filled in. So let's just go through them. So the first one is folder. So you can specify the folder um, and which different folder this triggers on. I'm going to leave this as default in my inbox, but if you have specific rules around things that may drop into certain folders and then actions that need to happen with them, you could set up a thing like that. So for instance, you could uh, have a rule in your in your Outlook that drops things into a certain folder and then those certain certain items need to be actioned or not actioned compared to others. So you could then do some automation based on that. Uh, we have um, some different filters here. So we've got a filter which is the to filter and the from filter. So this could be interesting if you are emailing a, a specific uh, email address, or if someone else in the in the true is is the is the recipient of that email address, and you want to trigger it based on that. We have the from, which is the sender who's sending the email. So this, if this trigger matches, then do a certain thing. So these basically are looking for match things. We can also separate them by semicolons, and we can type stuff into here. So I can type Matt um, Collins, and it finds me there, uh, and it. it like pre-filters it this way and gives me a little like nice uh, nice control in here. But I can also switch this out with the with the advanced mode, and it'll give me just an email address, and then I can separate them with semicolons. So don't be confused with that um, because when you when you read this, it kind of sa sounds like you just separate them with semicolons. If I put a semicolon here, it'll actually just break it. So that's that. Uh, so we have the to and the from uh, filters, which is great. We also have the fetch only unread messages. So this is the idea that if a message is unread, it'll only return those ones. So we have yes or no here, uh, and you can specify that however you want. So this will only return emails if they're unread and this is set to yes. If it's set to no, it'll, it'll bring back all emails, not just the unread ones. So it's a really handy filter to have on a action like this. Original mailbox address, this is the filter that allows you to specify a shared mailbox. So if the email is dropping into a shared mailbox and not specifically your email address, you can specify the mailbox in here and that's where it'll look for those emails. Include attachment, this allows you to uh, bring back or not bring back attachment details of the, of the uh, email itself. So when we looked at the last one, get email, that action, um, it changes the attachment content and either doesn't add it or adds it depending on this option. Um, and if, if this is set to true and this is set to yes, it will bring that actual, that actual attachment content with the query returning the record, which is great if you need to get that content and then do something with it, maybe share it or store it somewhere. So that's what this parameter does. Search query, so the search query allows you to actually filter the email being returned. So what it'll do is it'll start searching through your emails and it'll only match it if it if it um, includes one of the search parameters that you put in here. Um, the hint text does provide you a link to the Microsoft Docs website for the, uh, for the Microsoft Graph that allow you to look at the search parameters that you can use inside here. Um, so you can easily go look up the, the specific thing that you want and then uh, use that in the search query here. Top, this refers to the number of records that you will be returning back. So in this instance, it just defaults to 10, 
Um, if I remove that, it'll say that the default is 10. It doesn't usually it tells you if there's a, an upper limit, but it doesn't tell you there's an upper limit in this one, so I'll just leave it at 10 for now. And this just means it'll only bring back the first 10 records. If we click on Show Advanced Options, we get a few more uh, filters down here. So we have CC to or CC. So again, these are great filters to allow you to filter the emails that it's returning back if you want this to only run on, on a subset of data that you have. So those two are important and work in the same way as the to and proms. We also have importance. So this will filter it based on importance. So we can specify, okay, I only want emails uh, with a low importance because we obviously know all high emails are just going to be deleted. Actually, great use for this uh, action. If someone sends you a high importance email, you just uh, put it straight into the recycling because no one likes that. Um, if it's high importance, get me on Teams. That should be a t-shirt. Um, <laughs> only with attachments. So unlike this uh, this uh, parameter here, which is include attachments, only with attachments specifies if the email will be included in the filter if it's got attachments or not. So if this is set to yes, then the only emails returned to you in this action will be ones with emails. If it's set to no, then it will return all emails regardless of if they have attachments or not. And we also just have a subject filter, just a really handy filter. So something in the subject line that we can use as opposed to having to write our own search query, we can just say anything in the subject that contains a certain thing, let's return back to us. So in this instance, we'll choose flow. So what we'll do is we'll look through the emails and we'll return anything, uh, we'll return the top 10 that have the word flow in them. So now that we've gone through all those parameters and what they are and what they do, let's test this out. So we'll click on test. We'll trigger this from a previous action. So we'll hit test, save and test. And this will run through and this will bring me back some records. So take just a second, goes green, it's all good, took three seconds. So from the outputs here, we can see there's a little bit of information. So this is the array that we've got. So we start off with things like the ID and the receive time, um, the attachment uh, has attachment, it's set to false. We can see the subject, so alert. We've disabled one of your flows. Oh no, they've disabled one of my flows. Uh, one of your flows needed set, needs attention. Uh, it's been failing every time we run it, so we turned it off. Oh, thank you, Microsoft. Push notifications and email reminds for meditation app. Yeah, I really need to go and fix that. Um, it's not been working for a while, but I've just not around to it. So, um, so that's an interesting thing to know that Microsoft eventually just turned it off. Great, thank you, Microsoft. Um, so that's one, and then we can see, so this, this um, stops here and then there's a new new object inside this array. So there's a new one and this one says, uh, what does this one say? Alert, we disabled one of your flows. No, it's the same, same one. Scroll down a little bit. Uh, two of your flows failed. So we have another two flows failed. Uh, and then we have another two flows failed. Another two flows failed. Uh, two flows failed. Um, I'm beginning to notice three flows failed. I'm ready to notice pattern in this. I should really go look at my flows that are failing. But hey, isn't this a great use of something like this? If you have an unmonitored mailbox that just receives, um, you know, details of your flows and things like that, actually had to set them up with like a service account, um, you could use something like this to say, hey, if I get an email that says, you know, flows failed or we've disabled your flows, then actually forward that email to something that is monitored. This is a great use of a, of a of something like this. You can have this working on a schedule. You could have this running daily um, on new emails coming in. Um, you could you could do a lot with this action. It's really cool. It's got so many options, and they're all really user friendly as well. It's like email addresses. It's this. It's like you know has attachments. All those things are really really useful. So I love this action. I think it's going to be. Uh, one I use a lot, especially to make myself, um, you know, myself productive. So, but what do you guys think? What do you use this for at the moment? Do you use this? Do you not use this? Let me know in the comments down below uh, what you use this for, what you may use this for in the future. If you found this video useful, if you could like and share it with your friends, that would be much appreciated. If you've not already, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time.